Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is my remit to talk to you about uh, a well-kept secret, which is live cell therapy, um, which I would consider um, for scholars of alternative medicine to be really the birth of biological therapies. And this is a subject um, where there is massive confusion and misunderstanding. So if there are any orthopedic surgeons in the audience, I promise I'll speak very slowly. Um, the standard disclosure is that really I have no great financial interests. I wish I did so that I could pay my alimony. But uh, live cell therapy is not an approved treatment in the United States. Please be aware of that. What is live cell therapy? Well, as originally described in its classic form, it's the use of animal fetal tissues that are obtained, usually from a newborn sheep carcass, that has been freshly slaughtered in the clinic where the administration of cell suspensions occur. The fetal tissues that are removed and dissected rapidly after removal of the sheep fetus are prepared into fresh live cell suspensions which are injected into a patient within one hour of their collection from the fetus of the sheep. So in fact if you look at the approved definition by the German government where of course uh, in Germany live cell therapy is a licensed procedure um, the ideal target is to get the cell suspension injected within 20 minutes, meaning that one wants alive, viable fetal cells. Again, let me stress the idea of live cells or alive cells, which is the classic form of live cell therapy. Please understand that live cell therapy is not stem cell therapy per se, but the fetal suspensions are naturally enriched, of course, with stem cells. Life cell therapy has been described by many different terms that cause much confusion among physicians and recipients of the procedure. And in fact, upon review of the world literature, one can see that there are dozens of different names applied to what is the putative technique of live cell therapy. These are some of the confusing terms. Um, called biological therapy, glandular therapy, even Brinkley goat gland therapy. Romulus Brinkley was um, a gentleman who transplanted goat testicles uh, in the early part of last century with alleged beneficial outcome. See even more confusing terminology and understand that the birth and evolution of this technique occurred predominantly in Europe, uh, most notably in Germany. So you see all of these German aphorisms, uh, aphorisms like Frischen Zellen Therapeutica. Um, the father of this procedure, in fact, is Paul Niehans, a Swiss physician, who really started to do this around about the late 1920s or early 1930s. Let's look further at the definition of live cell therapy so there be no misunderstanding. Originally described by Paul Niehans, but he and others switched from the use of live cells to freeze-dried preparations of animal fetal tissue. Of course, such uh, freeze-dyed preparations are not alive cells. Now, I relate to you this morning the experiences of Villa Medica in Aden-Koben, Germany, which is one of the few remaining licensed facilities in the world that performs classic live cell therapy. Villa Medica uses only classic alive cells where they slaughter animals in-house for the procedure. Now, 
here is something that's quite astounding, but looking at the literature, as many as several million patients have undergone live cell therapy since its inception by knee hands in the early 1930s. And that includes both those individuals who may have gone through classic live cell therapy and many more who have gone through the administration of freeze-dried cell preparations by injection. Now, what is the mechanism of action of live cell therapy? If I was able to answer that question, then I would be deserving of a major prize, perhaps at least two beers. But unlike stem cell therapies, animal live cells do not undergo any significant degree of engraftment in human recipients. So let me dispel the myth. This is not stem cell therapy. The administered cellular material disintegrates relatively rapidly when injected, and it is believed to work by providing a mixture of biological signals that may, in complex mechanisms, reprogram cellular functions. And in fact, this is the basis of what Nihans described conceptually as revitalization of cells. So we're looking at delivering mixed biological signals or chemical messengers, including things such as RNA, DNA, and growth factors, for example. So this is really biological signaling with what one might say a blunderbuss approach. Let me explain the blunderbuss. This is a rifle that just shoots in all directions. Whereas, obviously, with target practice, we use a small caliber weapon. And in standard biological therapy, we're now using individual agents that we'll discuss somewhat as we progress through this lecture. Um, this is a very interesting distortion of this slide, but uh, that said, this is a diagram from Siegfried Bloch. And what this is showing is Bloch's hypothesis that injected live cells, sheep live cells, are phagocytosed and presented um, in fragmentary manners to various tissues. I'd like to acknowledge this presentation contains some of the lifetime work of Burkhardt Ashoff, who is the medical director of the Villa Medica Clinic that's operated for many years in succession to Alexander Galli, who was a direct disciple of Paul Niehans. And Dr. Ashoff does not recognize freeze-dried cellular material as fresh cell therapy. And I think there are good reasons for him to adopt that particular stance. Again, review the definition because this is important. Life cell therapy involves the injection of fetal animal cells in the human body, into the human body, with the target and objective of reprogramming. They disintegrate and present biological signals. And one thing that's very striking about this procedure, it, is do, it does not tend to precipitate immunogenic effects that one might anticipate due to mismatching of antigens across species.